I have seen a fair exhibition of their archery this day, in a favorite amusement which they call the Game of the Arrow, where the young men, who are the most distinguished in this exercise, assemble on the prairie a little distance from the village, and, having paid each one his entrance fee, such as a shield, robe, a pipe, or other article, step forward in turn, shooting their arrows into the air, endeavoring to see who can get the greatest number flying in the air at one time, thrown from the same bow. For this, the number of eight or ten arrows are clenched in the left hand with the bow, and the first one which is thrown is elevated to such a degree as will enable it to remain the longest time possible in the air. And while it is flying, the others are discharged as rapidly as possible. And he who succeeds in getting the greatest number up at once is best, and takes the good staked. In looking at this amusement, the spectator is surprised, not the great distance to which the arrows are actually sent, but at the quickness of fixing them on the string and discharging them in succession, which is, no doubt, the result of great practice, and enables the most expert of them to get as many as eight arrows up before the first one reaches the ground. For the successful use of the bow, as it is used through all this region of the country on horseback, and that invariably at full speed, the great object of practice is to enable the bowman to draw the bow with suddenness and instant effect, and also to repeat the shots in the most rapid manner. As their game is killed from their horses' backs while at the swiftest rate, and their enemies fought in the same way, and as the horse is the swiftest animal of the prairie, and always able to bring his rider alongside within a few paces of his victim, it will easily be seen that the Indian has little use in throwing his arrow more than a few paces. When he leans quite low on his horse's side and drives it with astonishing force, capable of producing instant death to the buffalo or any other animal of the country. The bows which are generally used in this region I have described in a former letter, and the effects produced by them at the distance of a few paces is almost beyond belief, considering their length, which is often over three and sometimes not exceeding two and a half feet. It can easily be seen, from what has been said, that the Indian has little use or object in throwing the arrow to any great distance. And, as it is very seldom that they can be seen shooting at a target, I doubt very much whether their skill in such practice would compare with that attained to in many parts of the civilized world. But with the same weapon, and dashing forward at fullest speed on a wild horse, without the use of the rein, when the shot is required to be made with the most instantaneous effect, I scarcely think it possible that any people can be found more skilled and capable of producing more deadly effects with the bow. George Catlin, 1841